Hey guys, it's Star the Flippin' Hippo. Thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel at Flippin' Hippos. Today is Friday, May 11th, so that means the weekend is coming tomorrow. The weekend will be up on us. It is yard sale season. So I just wanted to do a quick video on bolos for yard sales. Also, I want to, um, I've shown this before and I will show it again. It is something everyone needs. The yard sale treasure map, you can see it right there. That is what the app is called, the Yard Sale Treasure Map. It pulls yard sales from Craigslist and other publications in your area and puts them all on one nice neat map for you. Each red dot is the sale. And it is available for Apple and Android. And it is an invaluable tool for yard sale season. So this is going to come in two parts. We're going to do the bolos for the beginners and the bolos for the more advanced. The reason I say that is... Um, what was bolos for Keith and I last summer and our first year will not be bolos this year. When you're first starting out, um, when you're first starting out and you're trying to build up your store, especially if you're trying to build up to be a power seller or a volume seller, which was our goal from day one, we wanted to be power sellers, we wanted to be um, volume sellers, and we wanted to build fast. So we bought some things at yard sales and put them in the store that now we wouldn't do because now we have 1900 2000 listings in the store we sell 10 or more items a day our sell through rates pretty good um, now we're working on raising our average sale price and kind of gearing away from the cheaper items into the more expensive because we have built up to the the level of volume that we want now we can focus more on being more picky and more choosy and getting more expensive items in the store so if you're a beginner and you are aiming to be a volume seller you can um, look for certain things that will help you build up if you're a beginning seller that doesn't care about volume or being a power seller or a more seasoned veteran seller you want to look for the um, higher price tickets. Now that's not to say that the beginners shouldn't be looking for these too. I mean, we last year were looking for the smaller items and found some of the bigger ones. Our best find last year was a Polaroid camera. Um, this, they were so cute. This little old couple was sitting in their yard and they were just so cute and they had all these newspapers from when we landed on the moon and um, the day Kennedy was shot. All these really old items and he had this really nice old Polaroid. And we asked him how much he wanted for it. And he wanted to get rid of it and all of, his, all of its accessories and several other cameras in one lot. And he said that, he said, you know, I don't want to sell just that. I want to sell this whole table. And we're sitting there going, oh, he's going to ask for too much. And he gave us the whole thing for 40 bucks. We sold the Polaroid for $350. And the other cameras weren't worth as much, but they were like 100 to 200 plus all the accessories. So we got a really good deal. So... We didn't pass up on that because we were trying to be uh, building up with smaller items. So just be on the lookout for stuff like that. And if someone's going to give you a deal like that, take it. Um, the second best find we had, this woman had a giant table full of Alice in Wonderland coffee mugs, teapots, collectible dolls, collectible figures. Uh, the millennial pins from Disneyland. She just had this whole table full of Alice in Wonderland, right? And I really was just interested in this one teapot. And I asked her, I said, how much for the Alice? And I kind of pointed at the teapot. And she mistook my question and she kind of went, I'll give you the entire table for 50 bucks. Well, yeah, we didn't pass up on that. So we got this entire table and the teapot sold for a hundred dollars so the teapot paid for everything on the table most of it went fast like honestly when I came home and started listing all my Alice stuff that night it was selling as it was listing some of it was so popular it sold as it listed a couple of things took a lot longer um, I think we have two items left that were like a poster and there's a there's some a pin we have two things left and they just kind of sit around but I don't care because they're pure profit now once we sold that teapot it paid for the entire fifty dollars and everything else on that table was pure profit she also threw in um, 
my son was with us and he had an armful of plushies and she's like oh just throw those in so look out for things like that and I learned now that maybe instead of just asking about the teapot maybe you know this summer when we're out and I see a table full of stuff I'm just gonna be like what do you want for the whole table um so anyways I digress so bolos for beginners or for people who are just starting out but and this is good for you too if you don't have a lot of capital if you're just starting out and you don't have a lot of money to spend if you're trying to build the amount of items you have in your store and build up your volume there's a couple good items you can be looking for action figures um the little dudes look for popular characters look for ninja turtles uh wwe wrestlers superheroes gi joe um I said superheroes, but look for like recognizable characters from popular shows or comic books or movies. And a lot of times people have them in boxes and you can like say, I want the whole box and they'll give it to you for a couple of bucks and you can bring them home and lot them up and um, make sure you weigh them. So like when you lot them up, you want to, you want to either keep each lot under a pound so you can do it first class or make a big giant lot but know what it weighs so you can charge calculated shipping um but yeah the action figures are great but like i said make sure they're recognizable characters don't just buy like generic generic dudes they you want them to be recognizable characters that people are going to be looking for um legos is another good one they are actually a bolo for everybody if you find Legos buy them try to get lots try to get boxes or bins um, see if they'll give you their whole collection Lincoln logs that's another good one we um, found some in a canister it was missing pieces it was damaged and, and it still went for a lot of money plus they paid shipping it's like 20 or 30 bucks so Lincoln logs is another good one any toys, any vintage toys from the 80s or 90s, those are good to get. Like the original, do you guys know the telephone, the little toy telephone? They have one now that talks and you interact with it. But the original one was just on a string that you pulled and it was Rotary, uh, Fisher Price, it's white. I found one of those, the lady gave it to me for a buck, it had all kinds of damage and stuff. Someone bought it for 20 and paid shipping. So look for the vintage toys. Look for board games that are sealed. Um, you can take the risk with unsealed board games if you want. If they're cheap enough, you can take the risk to bring them home because sometimes if they're missing parts, you can still sell the pieces off individually. Um, or you can stand there and look through it at the yard sale and make sure everything's there. I personally just look for the, the ones that are sealed and you'd be surprised at how many board games that you can find still sealed in the package, even at yard sales. Um, but yeah, if you want to take the risk, if it's like a quarter and you want to take the risk and bring it home, um, a lot of times, like especially with Scrabble, there's crafters that buy those tiles, those letter tiles, so you can get a Scrabble for a quarter bring it home and don't even sell the whole game just sell the pieces and make sure you put it in the crafting categories and puts that somewhere in your title for crafts we've sold like four lots of tiles um before when we were first getting started um and clue for some reason clue pieces go really really well but those those notepads the clue notepads those go really well and i guess people that like to play clue they use all their pads up and they look for new ones because they don't want to just use plain paper. Um, and card games. If you can find card games for like 50 cents or a quarter, even used, especially um, Uno, Skippo, um, decks of cards about certain states or with popular characters on them, grab them up. Last summer we found so many Unos and so many Skippos where people were giving them away for a quarter and even used, they were going for $10, $12, $15. Um, the older versions, the more vintage versions are the ones you can get more towards $15 for. Um, modern versions will go for like $10, even used. I'm not even kidding you. So if you find these card games, pick them up. If you can find them sealed in the package, all the better. 
Um, so I guess I'm going to move on to what you want to be looking for if you're wanting higher average sale price. So I mentioned Polaroid cameras. You want vintage Polaroid cameras. Um, you can get digital cameras. We did okay with them. A lot of the digital cameras we picked up last summer we got for 50 cents or a dollar. Some of them didn't work. You can still sell them as is for parts. I would recommend turning your returns off on them and just sell them as is for parts. Um, and get, you know, you still make a profit that way. Sorry, my third strike. But if you're looking for the big money, look for your Polaroid cameras. We only found one ever, but it went for 350, so it's like, woo! I will always be looking for those. Um, and I know that like a lot of you think that you you go to yard sales for just, I mean, even I mostly go for the hard goods and stuff. Um, but keep an eye out for clothes too, because a lot of times, like especially if you're at yard sales and and higher end neighborhoods where more affluent people live, they'll put out. Miss Me jeans, Free People jeans, Silver jeans, Robert Graham shirts, Tommy Bahama shirts, um, Eileen Fisher dresses. They'll put out these really high-end um, clothing items and they'll price them at a dollar because they just want rid of it. I got a, a pair of Free People jeans last year for $2.50 that were like the 70s style with the high waist and the really big bell bottom legs and I got $50 for them. So even though you're not really looking for clothes so much when you're at yard sales, just kind of eyeball them if you can because a lot of the uh, a lot of the people with money just get rid of their stuff and they don't, they don't really care that it's worth X amount. They're just having the yard sale. They just want rid of it. They just want a couple bucks or a buck. Uh, look for ties. Again, also, a lot of people at yard sales put their ties out and they ask for, for little to nothing for them. And they'll have, like, the ones you should be looking for. Brooks Brothers, Donald Trump, Rush Limbaugh, the ones with the Tabasco on them. Other novelty ties with recognizable characters from pop culture. Um... Some people will put them out and just want 10 cents a tie or buy 10 for a dollar. So kind of eyeball those too. Um, nerf guns. Never, ever pass up nerf guns if they're a good price. Uh, even broken nerf guns will sell. There are people out there who buy up broken Nerf guns because they um, Frankenstein their own Nerf guns or fix them or like I said Frankenstein them into something bigger and better. There are people out there who do that and they're even looking for broken ones. We um, always pick up Nerf guns when we find them. We don't sell them on eBay though because we like to sell like giant boxes of like 20 or whatever. Um, so we usually do those like through Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace and just meet someone like at a, a local police station and sell them the whole lot and then we kind of like skip all the fees and the shipping. Um, we get more bang for our buck. They get more nerfs, Nerf guns for their, their buck. But you can sell them on eBay too. You can. That's fine. Um, but yeah, a lot of people get rid of these Nerf guns. Like we went to church rummage sales where they would just have boxes of them and they'd all be 10 cents a piece. Or you go to yard sales where they have a whole box and they'll just give you the whole box. Uh, look out for video game systems and video games, obviously, at yard sales. Um, you're going to have some people who really want what it's worth. They want what their game console is worth or what their games are worth, and they're going to be higher priced. You want to stay away from them. Um, and some people are just giving it away. So, because they're having a yard sale and they're trying to get rid of stuff. Um, so, I would look for any kind of video game controllers, video games, video game consoles. We do really well with the um, rock band guitars. Look for vintage 80s toys and plush. Um, there, do you guys remember the big, 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 like this big pound puppies? I felt like two last summer. One I got for 50 cents, one I got for a dollar, and they sold for like $25. So look for those. 
Um, I would stay away from movies, even if they're a good deal, just because the race to the bottom on movies on eBay is just awful. We found so, when we were new and starting out, and um, didn't know better, we bought a lot of movies for really, really cheap at these yard sales last year, and you get them home, and they're worth, like, people, are, people literally sell movies for $2 free shipping, and I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they're not out of business. Maybe they're doing something. I don't know. But we can't make money. And we can't sell them for $10 or $12 if other people are selling them cheap. So I always just recommend staying away from movies. Um, with one condition. Um, DVD, Disney, new. Like, still shrink wrapped. I did really well with those. Um, don't get the VHS, Disney, that in the clamshell boxes that is a myth if you hear the black diamond vhs in the clamshell boxes sells for millions of dollars that is untrue <laughs> um but i found like and they were you know they were like specialties i think they was like the barbie movies i guess that's not disney but the barbie movies and like the tinkerbell and her friends movies i found this whole stack sealed and i did really well i think i sold all the tinkerbells together in a lot for like 25 bucks or something um, so I would look for those, like, I guess any movie sealed, but you gotta be careful, like, if you can, like, sneakily, sneakily, uh, comp them at the yard sale. Sorry, I had a brain fart because my phone went off. Um, you want to look for DVD players, VHS comp, DVD, VHS combos, vintage glassware, um, look through the books. But don't go crazy on the books. Again, books are something that have definitely been a race to the bottom on eBay. And, like, even a brand new Stephen King hardback novel, you can maybe get six bucks for. It's ridiculous. But glance through them because there are certain books that go for a lot of money. If you can find um, those odd books about weird things, like how to be a mechanic and fix plumbing like there's really weird manuals um you want to pick those up i don't think you could be a mechanic and fix plumbing that was not a good example but if you like we got one about i think it was about how to be an electrician it was a little pocket guide it went for pretty good so look for like those like how to's and stuff like that um college textbooks obviously as long as they're not like, completely outdated um and some collector's books and stuff like that will go. So, I think that is it. I'm thinking typewriters. Look for typewriters. Um, sometimes people give those away. Like the vintage old ones. They'll just have them sitting out of the yard sale. I'll be like, free. I love the sign on it. Free. Free. I don't want it. Take it. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, I think that's it. If you guys uh, think of anything that I have forgot, feel free to leave it down in the comment section if you feel like sharing your bolos with everybody else. Um, and I guess that's it. So let me know what you think. Let me know if I missed anything. Do me a favor, smash that like button down below. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to our channel and help us feed a hungry hippo. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We are at Flippin' Hippos. Until next time, you guys have a good night.